This is some, oh God. This is some green light good stuff called, uh, oh, I've forgotten what it was called. The Edgelands, fuck's sake. This is some green light good stuff called Edgelands. Now it may just be that I've got a lot of porn open in another tab, but uh, Edgelands sounds like something completely different to me. But anyway, it's about magic and folklore. That's what the game's about, not about what I'm thinking about. Uh, it's got uh, some really nice music in this trailer here. Um, very uh, weird trippy kind of music. A very nice visual style, the, the featureless faces with the dot eyes and everything. It's a, an adventure game, as you can see. Uh, beautiful backgrounds. Uh, I love the minimalist style here. Sometimes that can uh, be a stand-in for lazy stuff, but sometimes it can look stylistically very effective like it does here. Uh, not a particularly long trailer though, in fact it's just finished. So, there. I don't know why I said so there, there's, there's no greater point I'm making. Set in the present day, which would explain some of the uh, more modern looking buildings we saw in the trailer, it's based on folklore, both real and imagined, uh, so I guess that just means they made some up. You begin the game in a house in the forgotten rural backwards beyond the city, and soon find yourself off on the trail of your wayward cat, Oh, exploring an uncanny rustic twilight landscape. Familiar rural landmarks overlap with otherworldly occurrences, creating a dreamlike blurring of the ordinary and the supernatural. Promises an evocative electronic soundscape that responds and adapts to your actions as you interact with the environment and its inhabitants. Well, that sounds cool, doesn't it? You make different choices that affect the journey and change the way the narrative unfolds. If you were ever a fan of Sunless Sea or Fallen London, then you may be interested to know that Fail Better Games, the developer of those particular titles, is responsible for the funding of the Edgelands. Uh, this game got money through Fund Better, which is a program that Fail Better set up, so that's nice to know. That's a developer passing on the wealth. That's nice. Isn't it nice, everybody? I don't know why I'm saying it's so sarcastic and nasty sounding. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Fell Better Games, if you want to give me some money, then uh, you're more than welcome. Key features, journey through eerie locations at the edge of civilization from foggy marshes to forgotten pubs. There's a couple of those in Erith, so that's not too ex exotic for myself. Solve puzzles through text-based dialogue choices and interactions, many with multiple solutions. Converse with a variety of obscure denizens of the Edgelands. How obscure? Are we talking like Ed Tudor Pole? the less famous host of the Crystal Maze, who, despite not being Richard O'Brien, did just as good, I always thought. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uncover a narrative that weaves folklore and the modern world together in a compelling magical realist tale. Enjoy an immersive dynamic soundtrack which is shaped by your actions and enhances the mood of uncanny beauty and mystery. The developer Martial Arts Software says that the best way to describe the game is uh, basically as a point and click adventure, but there's less clicking involved because you're directly controlling the character, so it's not click and watch them walk. They deliberately did that to give you more of a sense of being in the world. and to have a lot of contextual interactions, uh, like walking just past certain animals or things in the environment, logs, bits of grass, whatever, and you can feel a, a, like they're a lot more tangible as you interact with them when you walk past them. All things told, it doesn't look like a, it's gonna be a massive game, but it doesn't look like it needs to be either. It's just a very stylistically bold, a little bit creepy, and ultimately charming looking game. And I realized I just said the word charming, which is, it's up there, it's getting up there at least with visceral in terms of games criticism, words that are just hackneyed and shitty and shouldn't be said. So I, I'm trying to cut that out, but I said it, I can't take it back. I, I would edit it out, but I'm not gonna because this in my mind is a fun little bit of awkward exchanging that I'm doing right now while I show more screenshots. In conclusion, I think Edgelands deserves to be on Steam from the looks of it. Hopefully. Probably get there, it's in the top 100 already, so they just need a little extra push, I guess. As always, I like to drop in on previous games we've featured in the series, and I'm pleased to note that Pigsidus and Fox and Forests have both been greenlit since we last looked at them. Hooray! That brings us, I believe, barring this video of course, uh, the good like green stuff. I said it, I said fucking good like green stuff, I'm not even gonna correct myself anymore. Anyway, as I was saying, this makes us one for one 
Uh, we are at 100% success rate. Every game featured on this series so far has been greenlit, and I'm not going to take credit for that. And that's not a Jimquisition style fake arrogant thing. Where I'm not going to take credit for it, but I do. Uh, clearly, I am not the most influential person in the world. Uh, far from it. Uh, I'm a I'm a D-lister at best, but. I do feel that we have been helping. I do feel, I, at least I like to feel that I am finding very interesting games and giving them just that extra bit of a bump that helps them out. Again, as I've said before, incredibly fulfilling and excellent and I love uh, looking back on these games that we've been featuring and seeing that they are getting where they need to be and that hopefully we are helping to balance out a lot of the shit that gets greenlit, a lot of the cynical crap that gets up through less scrupulous means. So, yeah, long may it rain. And well done to Pixidus and Fox and Forests and, of course, every other game we featured so far. And good luck to the Edgelands, which I don't believe is going to need too much luck because something tells me they're going to get up there pretty easily.